I want to tell you a really surprising story about a trip I made to Portugal to a conference and to the strange events that led to me having a new paper to be published and also led to me taking a shower wearing a sun hat. I was invited by a group of young Portuguese chemists who annually organize a conference to which they invite two or three senior chemists to give lectures and listen to their lectures. The conference started on Monday morning and all went well. There was a brief opening, the first plenary lecture, coffee break with photographs, and we were halfway through the second lecture when suddenly all the lights went out. Now, power cuts happen from time to time, and usually lights come on again after a minute or two. But in this case, it stayed dark. So we all went out and milled around for a bit, and it was decided to declare lunch early. So we went on for the lunch break. And when we came back, people had found through the social media and so on, that the whole of Portugal, the whole of Spain, had had electricity cut off. Trains had stopped, planes were not flying, traffic lights, stop lights for the Americans, were not working, traffic was jammed, people were stuck in the subway in Madrid, and so on. So I and two other plenary lecturers were taken back to our hotel because there was nothing to do at the conference. Um, but the student said that if the power didn't come on that day, that would be the end of the conference. It would have to be cancelled. So it was a nice sunny day. And I and the um, two other plenary lecturers and a Portuguese professor went for a nice little walk around the town, stopped for a drink. And it was really weird because most of the shops were shut. No, a lot of people had no cash and you couldn't use card machines. And of course, restaurants couldn't cook anything. So we managed to find the last four salads to eat. But it reminded me a bit of a novel about Australia, which Brady may have read, called On the Beach, where people are hanging around waiting for nuclear fallout from a disastrous nuclear war to reach Australia and kill them all. I have a copy here for you to see. And then, it was a bit weird, but suddenly I had an idea that perhaps to cheer up the student organisers, the three of us plenary lecturers plus our Portuguese host should all, together with the students, write a paper. The next day we told the students this and they were very excited. I should say the power came back, came back on at about 10 o'clock at night, after it was completely dark. And I'll explain about the sun hat in a minute. But the question was, what should we write the paper about? We then had the idea that we should write about resilience, because the power cut had not only affected our lives as individuals, but it had affected the science and chemical enterprise on the whole Iberian Peninsula. So, for example, most of the chemical factories had to stop production of chlorine, oxygen and so on stopped, and chemical processes were stopped. Important experiments stopped. Labs couldn't operate. So we suddenly realised that in a world that is becoming increasingly driven by electricity, we've got to learn to be much more resilient. 
So we came up with the idea of the 10 principles for more resilient chemistry. So we made up a list of principles, which the first letter of each of the principles spells the word resilient. So the first principle, range of suitable renewable feedstocks, begins with R. You're going to read me the whole list? Well, I'll read it out. Go on, read them. The first one is range of suitable renewable feedstocks, evaluate all potential disruptions, safe operation in all circumstances, interruptible processes, localised production on distributed sites, inherently safe processes, educate a resilient transdisciplinary chemical workforce, net zero but with multiple potential sources of energy, continuous flow reactors for efficiency and safety, and finally, engineer for both resilience and sustainability. So as soon as we got home, we started exchanging emails and writing the paper. Within just about two weeks of the initial power cut, we had the first version of our paper online in Chem Archive as a preprint, and a few days later it was accepted for publication in the journal Green Chemistry. And during the time between posting it and being accepted, we took comments from various people, modified the things. Did everyone at the conference get their name on the paper? No, just the student organisers. Okay. And I should say that those students were brilliant in their demonstration of resilience. They reorganised the programme so that everybody got their lectures and things went more or less according to plan. The only thing that had to be dropped was the city tour, but that's not essential for the conference anyway. After the, um, we had walked around and had our food, I went back to my hotel room and it got darker and darker. And I suddenly remembered that I'd just been on holiday and I'd put a torch in my rucksack and it was still there. And so I started walking around my hotel room with a torch, but it's not very convenient in any one way one has a torch on a phone. But then I also remembered that I had brought a sun hat because in the south of Portugal it's quite sunny and it's quite a strange sun hat. It's so unfashionable, even I am not fooled by it as a fashion item, but it has a strange feature that you can clip up the, ring, the rim. And so I put the torch in the rim and then... Like a coal miner. I could then put on my hat and go into the shower as long as I didn't get the hat wet and still see what I was doing. So the shower like wasn't going onto the hat, obviously. It was it? fortunately one that was of lower level. OK. But the hotel bathroom had no windows at all, so it was completely dark. But I felt quite proud of my engineering solution. It didn't fall out. It looks like it's going to fall no. out. No. That's it pretty tight. Yeah, OK. Come out of the process in the mines. So they take this sponge and turn it into grains, rather like this. Here are grains of platinum. This is probably the only time in my life that I will be able to play with platinum in such a casual way. And over here, I'll use the other hand so I don't mix them up, are similar sorts of grains of iridium, but they're very much heavier. They turn this sponge 